God bless you for being here is a joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Okay, greetings, Wachara Nazo. Let's sing. I'm a head of salvation. Wait, wait. I'm purchased of God I'm born of His Spirit I'm going to be washed in the blood One more time Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh yeah Oh what a Glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, a born of His Spirit, born of His Spirit. I'm washed. How many of you are washed? Yeah, this is my story. This is my song, yeah. I'm praising my Savior of the day, Lord. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior. Just lift your hands and begin to praise your Savior. Talk to him. Tell him he's wonderful. Praise him, somebody. I'm praising you, my Savior. You're wonderful, Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. Shazagata Shaziada Baga Shazagata Yegata Sorolo Shazarami and the Bring back my sound, brother Shazoromogo Taria Zadada. My hallelujah belongs. To you, anybody here who has a hallelujah? My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah, my hallelujah belongs to you. That's it. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to. You. One more time, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. You desire. Sa 
Somebody celebrate God. Come on, lift your hands and do it for Jesus. You deserve it. You deserve it. Jesus, you deserve it. Leaders, we are worshipers. Come on. You deserve it. here with a reason why you're here. I am here to say it's all because of you. It's all because of you. One more time. Say, you are the reason why I lift my hands. Why I lift my voice. Why I sing to you. I'm alive today and I'm here to say I am here to say it's all because of you it's all because of you yeah. you are the reason you are the reason come on say you are the reason you are the reason Lift your hands, say, you are the reason, Jesus, you are the reason, oh, you are the reason, Savior, ruler, Jesus, Jesus, Savior, Savior, Zagabazota Sakaya Baba. Siabayabada. Zagala Josoto Baba Yabada. Yagazabayabada. Father, we pray. Let your kingdom come in this place. Let your will which is already established in heaven. Let me done right here, right now, in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Clap your hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me see it. such a blessing. Um, I wanted to say a couple of things about encouragement for the men of God, and I'm glad Bishop has already sorted that out. So tell your neighbor, you're encouraged, and the devil can do nothing about it. He has said everything about Kenya. What a blessing. Kenya has just gotten saved the other day. 
We are now discipling Kenya. We need to baptize. You know, Matthew 28, good to see you, uh, Reverend Monio, God bless you. Yes, keeping strong. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 19 says, Go make disciples of all nations. Nations there is ethnos, which is ethnic groups. As soon as you say ethnos, that means you define ethnos through culture. So, the way people think, their way of life, their mannerisms, their language. So, you disciple, you baptize culture. Give it a new language, a new way of life and everything. It's not individuals, it's discipling nations. We'll preach that before Jesus returns. For now, I have another matter. For now, I have another matter. Amen? God bless you. My name is David Juma. Those we have never met since Adam and Eve, we are meeting now. We are meeting now. God bless you. It's my second time to be in Dallas. Uh, thank you, Bishop, for inviting me last time. Uh, I've been to America since a couple of years ago. Uh, then I had 14 years break because the Lord told me go east. So I stopped coming to this side of the west. Uh, though in 2018, I flew over here on my way to Brazil for gospel campaigns. Uh, because preaching is what I do. That, that's what I do. Just talking, like Bishop. We just talk. You know, there's no other work we do, just talking. Yeah, plus other things that assist the talking to be well oiled. <laughs> like taking concussions <laughs> and manufacturing them. <laughs> If there is a sister next to you, tell her, if you don't make, know how to make conocotions and you're not married, you have a big problem. Okay, leave that alone. That's for another day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, but because the world is a small village, you can look for me online, Apostle David Juma on Facebook. Uh, I'm not very good in YouTube, but I'm resuscitating it because of teaching some prophetic stuff I want to do on YouTube. But you can find me on Elevate TV Kenya on YouTube, Life Church International Kenya, and those kind of. If you Google my name, Mr. Google will get you well connected. Uh, DavidJuma.com, you'll find my staff there and the ministry we are doing. Amen. All protocols observed in as far as intros are concerned. But I write a couple of books. Would you let me permit you to put your hand in my bag? It's just $10 for doing that. And then give me those, give me those, give me those books. Amen. Um, I owe a couple of books, but because of, you know, immigration, traveling with them and so forth, so you can only see with your eyes. However, 2018, the Lord told me, describe what the 21st century disciple looks like. And here is a book, Christ-like disciple. These are 34 characteristics by the Spirit. He helped me to put that together. It will help you as a couple, as a family. You can read a characteristic every day, discuss it, share it, fellowship over it. It will be a blessing. This book is available on Kido and Amazon. So you guys can get it, and that will be a blessing. Amen. Um, I have another book. I don't have it here. It's called Heart relationships that unlock your destiny. This is concerning fathers, spiritual fathers, and that's going to be my subject this afternoon, fathers and sons. How do spiritual fathers lead their sons in ministry? And how should sons respond to the leadership of their fathers? I did that book in 2009 and is being used in a couple of nations. It's a blessing. For surely, if something good could come out of Albagon, something else could come out of Kianjege East. <laughs> so, you can look for that book. It's on Kido and on uh, Amazon. One of the universities in Kenya has reviewed my, those, my, my, at the Christ-like disciple, and they have admitted it as one of the textbooks 
in Nazarene University. Now, during the days of COVID, everybody disagreed with money. So the Lord told me, restructure your money. So I wrote this book, 2020, Restructuring Your Money. Uh, I think they are trying to put it on Amazon. I don't know whether they are finished or not, but uh, 24 things uh, you need to appreciate their principles on financial freedom. Uh, the other books are not available uh, online. You too can be a man of God. Uh, seven marks of what a man of God is all about. This is a very amazing book. I preached this message in Pennsylvania 2005 to leaders in a city called Redding City in those days when I used to come to America. Uh, there's another little book, Resisting Defilement. Uh, is a pastoral book. You can read this in one day. Don't worry. All my books are usually free, so uh, it's easy to get them. You only pay the publisher. <laughs> so if you are very nice to Pastor Maura, we can organize how we can give you my samples, but you have to have the certificate signed by the bishop. So, you know, that's what they said we do with the registration of churches in Kenya because they have opened that window. They have made it even more complicated. Uh, you need a certificate of good conduct, but you have never been in jail. You have never sinned. So uh, we, we, are, we are going to check on that, Bishop. We are going to check on that because truly we have really sinned before. And we don't have good record, but Jesus removed the handwriting that was written against us. So we have to adjust that in the new government. Let's start the engine. Go to... No, you can't go. You are just seated. Oh, you can't even open. So let's open for you. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Uh, I have 30 minutes according to the program. So I'm going to add another 30 minutes because the minutes the preachers preach are usually longer than ordinary minutes. The Bible says, therefore, holy brethren. Look at your neighbor say, I think you are one of the holy brethren. Partakers of what? Heavenly calling. This is something we need to do. Consider the apostle. Who? And the high priest of our confession. What is his name? No, Christ Jesus. I know before resurrection he was Jesus Christ, but now he's Christ Jesus. That's another message for another time. The risen Christ. On this side of resurrection, we need to understand Christ, the resurrected one. Now, the point is, let's do some quick, uh, I'm going to teach, I'm not sure whether I'm going to preach, uh, but whatever preaching is, but we'll combine all those things, but I'm also going to minister prophetically to a couple of you. So tell your neighbor, sit properly in the spirit. Amen. When we move to a camera, if we attend to Mimi, me I keep on walking, so you don't dare sleep. Otherwise, you take away your camera. You know I'm a TV man, so I know how TVs work. All right, but you guys are doing very well. I watch you in Nairobi when Maura comes preaching, Bishop, and Mama wants to know. I liked her. I liked her messages. God bless you. Kenya should listen to you more. But if they bring you again, you pay. All right, sorry. Amen. We shall organize a few bananas. It shall be enough. The writer of Hebrews, we don't know whether it is Paul or Apollos, but one of those men. For me, I choose Paul. Writing to who? Believers who used to be followers of Judaism. Laws of Moses, the Torah, the temple, the rules, the regulations. They have a high priest. They have sheep to, and animals to sacrifice. They have come from all that. But recently, when this man of Galilee died on the cross and gave us salvation, something has shifted. Now, the writer is talking to these believers because they are a little confused. They are wondering what to do with this Jesus of Nazareth. This is what they are being told. You are now partakers of the heavenly calling. Oh my God. 
And now you need to put into mind. You got to consider Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. And look at the two titles he's been given. The Apostle. I like sound, by the way. I like sound. Some of you, I mean, the devil has really beaten you down. You need sound to wake you up. It's only that those boys there are, you know, sorry, those men of God, they are uh, the kazuga, yeah. They have uh, nini kidogo, but it's good for, for us for now because we are few. Somebody say the apostle. Jesus has been given a title. He's the apostle. He also has another one, the high priest. Hey, the high priest one, Bishop, is a little bit shocking for the Judaistic believers because they are saying, Caiaphas is fired. The high priest in town is no more. We have a new high priest now. Hey, he's the one who has gone behind the curtain that was split, we said yesterday, from top to bottom, and then we entered from bottom up. You didn't get it. You'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> We've gone to the very presence of God through this new high priest. He's gone to heaven with the blood, not of bulls and goats, his own blood. He has opened a new way where there was no way. Oh my God. Now through Jesus, we have access to the Father. But he is the apostle. I went to preach in Pakistan. And they told me, sorry, we can't receive you as an apostle because Pakistan has only one apostle. I said, I understand. So what do you want to call me? Just, I told them, just call me David Juma. I don't have a title, title, titiosis, a disease called titiosis. You know, I, I don't have it, you know. So I'm okay, just call me by my name. God says, I'll make your name great, not your title. So they, just for the sake of religious, whatever, they called me Reverend Doctor. <laughs> I said, you don't need all that. Although I have both. Yeah, because I was commissioned by leaders in the city as an apostle. So I have, well, religious, in the religious order, I'm good. And uh, I also came to New York 2004. A certain university was investigating me and they decided I, I don't, you know, I qualify, though I was below 40 years then. They said, you are the only person below 40 years who qualifies for this distinction, and they gave me a doctorate. But I don't use it. I don't use it, but I have it. Before they began to sell it in Kenya, I got mine originally. <laughs> okay, you didn't get that politics. You, you are in America, you are very safe. Praise God. Somebody say apostle. Now, if we are going to understand fathering and sonship, I got to lay a foundation for a few minutes to understand this is apostolic doctrine. This is a foundational matter. Every leader, pastor, core leader must understand what God wants the church to do now. He said, Bishop told us, revelation is progressive. God is always revealing himself in certain ways. God is like fire. He's always burning. Have you ever seen fire which just stands in one place? You know, fire is always moving. If fire begins to burn on that side, uh, the people on the other end of the houses, they go to begin to prepare themselves. Fire is on the way. God is like water. He's always moving. Oh, he's flowing. Glory to God. He's like wind. He's always blowing. And the wind is coming. Hallelujah. And so it's important to appreciate that fathering and sonship is a language, biblical language, that the church has begun to appreciate in the 20s. There has been fathers before, but we never refer to as fathers. Only Catholic has had fathers, but without wives. So it's another one. That's another kazugaya. That's another greed. So this one, the, <laughs> Jesus. This one is the one that has sons. The other one is a strange animal. So let's not go there. But this one, <laughs> so specifically for me, 2003 is when we began to literally teach in our church 
that they are actually fathers in the Bible. Let me, let me now, now that the engine is running, go to, I'll be back to this verse, okay? Go to Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 19. The Bible says, For you are no longer strangers and foreigners or aliens. That's familiar. But you are now fellow citizens with the saints and members of what? The household of God. The word household is the word family. Listen, Dallas has one church. Okay, let me try to, because this is a leadership meeting, here we cannot introduce what we call advanced studies. Somebody say advanced studies. I have a problem with the church unity because you cannot unite the church. The church is one. Something one you can't unite. Seller. There's a mistranslation. Actual word for unity is oneness. The church is one, one unit. You can't divide it into, into pieces. However, for the sake of charismatic uh, understanding, <laughs> biblical, traditional, religious understanding, household. Somebody say household. That means house. This is family of God. Now, the advantage is this family of God in Dallas is located in different houses. Each house has a head of the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nehemiah is one house. This house has a father. It has a head. And there are certain family members of this house. The other pastor on the other corner of the city. Okay, he's little not a church. <laughs> It's actually a house. It's a family. You're part of the family of God in the city. And the pastor, the leader of that church, congregation, these are just words, is the head of that family. Look at Israel. Israel is one nation. Has how many tribes? Twelve tribes. So each tribe has a head of tribe. Tribe has clans, families, houses. This is how it's organized, but it's one nation called Israel. Oh my God. So the church is one. The body of Christ is what? One. I know you are familiar with Psalms 133. How beautiful it is for brethren in Dallas to be together in unity. No, it's oneness. Because it's like the anointing oil upon the head of the head of that you know, spiritual uh, infrastructure. Aaron, it goes down to his beard, even to the garments. For where there is that oneness, God commands a blessing, even life. How long? Forever. You, are you familiar with the scripture? I mean, okay. Listen. How good it is for brethren or brothers. The Hebrew word for brethren there is not one individual man. It's actually the tribe. How beautiful, how pleasing it is for Israel to have Ephraim, to have Levi, to have Simon, to have Reuben, to have Judah. How beautiful it is for the tribes. Okay. So every house must have a leader as a father in the house. Are we together? Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 3. Holy brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider this Christ Jesus who is the apostle and high priest of our confession or profession. Now, apostle. Let's, let's follow that apostle because the church should become apostolic. The church should migrate from Catholicism especially of Rome, the church should migrate from all these many stuff and go back to the Jesus original plan. And it's a journey that takes about a hundred years, by the way. So some may, may be translated to their fathers before they actually see the change. But let's begin the journey. Why were there no immense? Is it that you are not understanding me or are you trying to assimilate you are not encouraging me. Me, I'm already encouraged. 
and I'm not going to cry after this service, but because I cried, I cried when I was in Nairobi. Okay. Go to, first of all, look at this apostle, verse 2. The Bible says, for he was faithful. The word faithfulness has come back. Where we talk pastor, end Araka. He was faithful. Somebody shout, he was faithful. Look, to him who appointed him. An apostle must be faithful. Oh, I thought he is at the top. Because most Africans, listen, uh, most of us in that part of the world, uh, we know the chief and the king. We have that chief mentality. The guy with many cows, more land, sorry, many wives, many children. So when we see apostle, we tend to think, this is a big guy, <laughs> was much sheep. But listen, apostles in Africa should not be like the chief, should be like a mother. Like a mother. And there are scriptures for that. Let me not go there. Just, let's just say he was faithful. Look, to him who appointed him. So even apostles are appointed. Guy Fafa. I mean, sorry. I mean, God the Father. Apostles were appointed. So every spiritual leader must appreciate his appointment. To him who appointed him. Even as Moses was faithful in all his house. Are we together? L let's read all the way to verse 6 very quickly for the sake of children. Uh, for this one, capital O, that's Christ, uh, has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses in as much as he who built the house has more honor than the house. The matter of honor will come later. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is who? Is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. Look at verse 6. But Christ as who? A son. Did we hear Christ as an apostle? Now he's a son. That's what I wanted you to see. He's an apostle, but now he is a son. Wow. He's a spiritual leader, but he has to operate from the heart as a what? As a son. Now, write this down. Christianity is more relational than organizational. I know you know the head of the ministry and the organizational structures and the organograms and so forth. They help us and they should be maintained at a certain level for purposes of order, protocol, and delivery of services and so forth. But spiritually, the system, the infrastructure that should operate in the body of Christ is not the organogram, rather the heart relationship between fathers and sons. That's what I'm here to install. I have an app. I've come to install it in your spirit. Do you have space? Ask anybody, do you have space? Are you ready for 7.0? Are you ready? This is 2023. We version. It's come up before 2022. 7.0. Somebody say fathers and sons. Wow. Who is the greatest example? Is Jesus. The second statement you need to write down. Our God is both a father and a son. Never forget that. Our God is both a father and a son. So we cannot live in another aspect. We cannot live in another relationship other than the atmosphere of Father God and Son. Are we together? Now that the engine is running, run to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Listen to this. I'm dropping revelation upon revelation, and I like what Bishop said that if you can see it, you cannot unsee. 
So now I say, blind see, deaf hear in the name of Jesus. Oh, God the Father is talking to God the Son. Listen to the testimony of the Father. For you loved righteousness and hated lawlessness or iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God has anointed you. He's telling Jesus, his son, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows or above your companions. What is he saying about the son? Two things. One, you have loved righteousness. To do things right in accordance with the word of God, the demands of scripture, you are committed to do things according to Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You, you will understand it later. So, you have loved righteousness. Do you remember Jesus going to be baptized by John? Jesus must begin ministry. But guess what? He must align himself to those who have gone ahead. Who are those who had gone ahead before Jesus could begin ministry? John the Baptist. So Jesus, it doesn't matter how anointed you are. Show up in the baptism of John. Ask your neighbor, who baptized you? Uh, in the spirit, in the ministry. How did you come in? There must be somebody who will bring you in. There must be somebody who will prepare the way for you. There must be a father, someone who God anoints and brings on your path to bring you into this thing called ministry. Oh my God. And when John saw Jesus and Jesus said, baptize me. John said, no, no, you, you baptize me. With you remember when we met in our mother's wombs, you are in Elizabeth. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I was in Mary, you are in Elizabeth. And uh, you baptized me, Jesus. Do you remember that meeting? You guys don't remember. Okay, I know you are not there. But have you read in scripture, when the two women met, the babies baptized each other. May, may there be a baptism right now going on in the spirit. May something jump and leap in somebody's spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but John is saying, I can't baptize you. Jesus said, no, 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 you must baptize me. Listen to what Jesus said. For I must fulfill all righteousness. Ah, John allowed him and baptized him. So, Jesus, you love righteousness. But look, number two, you hated lawlessness. The old English, iniquity. The he Greek word for lawlessness is the word anomia or enomia, anomia, which means without law, independent. Jesus hated the idea of being independent. I'm about to throw a few stones and you're not going to take me anywhere because Bishop is here with me. Any independent ministry, you have a few months to shift your independence and come into alignment. Listen, Jesus could never be independent. If Jesus was independent of the Father, even for one second, he would not have been the Son of God. He only did what he saw his Father do. He only said what he heard the Father say. Jesus operated in the pattern of Father and Son. That's the only pattern that operates in the body of Christ. And that pattern, you got to see it. You got to appreciate it. So, he hated the idea of being independent, without father, without reference to, without submission to, without recognition and honor. He never operated independently. Let me make a little bit dangerous statement, which if you don't agree, I allow you. It's okay. Take four months to think about it. Don't even comment. You only comment after four months. Here is a statement. You cannot be independent and holy at the same time. Seller. Hey. You cannot be independent and holy at the same time. 
Okay. We are now back to Apostolic 101. Go to Luke chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Let's read these verses. I'm just laying foundation. Uh, maybe tomorrow we can put scaffolding or before Jesus comes. This is only conference one for this matter. We'll be back before Jesus comes. Season two. Okay, sorry. You didn't say anything and I was trying to invite myself. It's okay. It's okay. We will, we will give an offering and then we shall be back. <laughs> Have you arrived in Luke chapter 12? No, no, chapter 6, verse 12. Where will we make a 12, 6? So you are going to give one twenty-six dollars for that case. I wish I was that kind of a preacher who looks at the verse and raises an offering. <laughs> hey, the last days there are many people. I'm telling you. The Bible says, "Now it came to pass in those days when he was out in the mountain to the mountain to pray. He went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God." This is a founder of. Vigils, night vigils, all night prayer meeting. Who is the founder of all night prayer meetings? Jesus. So next time you go to an all night prayer meeting, uh, you are copying Jesus. He's the one who started what? Kesha, all night prayer meeting, right? Look at the next verse. The Bible says, and when it was day. So when you go to an overnight prayer meeting, when do you leave that meeting? I'm asking you, when do you leave the night meeting? When it is day. So all of you who are leaving at midnight, it, was that a Jesus Kesha? Okay, you didn't get the point. You get it. You see my people perish for? You stay the whole night. You walk out of that prayer meeting when the sun has come out. That's the biblical pattern of all, all night prayer meetings. Okay. Then he called his disciples to himself. What did he do? He chose 12. Then, whom he also named apostles. I'm reading that to tell you. This word, apostles, came from the mouth of Jesus. It's not something we collected from anywhere. It's a Jesus matter. Somebody say, apostles. They are in Ephesians 4, 12. And he himself, Jesus, gave some to be. Apostles. All right. Go to, because I'm laying a foundation. Go to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28. This is what the Bible says. And he has appointed these in the church. 12, 28. Who has he appointed in the church? First, who? Apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. By the way, if you are doing church, pastors, don't build with after that. Build with fast. Hey. I know you, you are just doing miracles from, okay, Africa. They are doing miracles in Africa from 9 in the morning up to 4 o'clock on Sunday. So they are building with after that. Okay, look at the next statement. Then, gifts of healings. So they are using the then, not even fast. How many of you know fast things first? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The principle of first. The word first is the word in Greek, proton. Proton is a Greek word that means three things. Right quickly because time young we measure. And I'm trying to extend up to 130 as I was told. Thank you, Jesus. It means first in time. The first person in a place has authority. He has proton grace. He came here first. The first person who establishes certain protocols in the spirit has grace. An apostolic grace for proton first. Number two, it means first, not only in time, but first in order. In the order of things, apostles first. Number three, it means, proton means first in rank. In terms of spiritual rankings, there is grace and anointing in the first. So Jesus placed them apostles. Remember Hebrews 3. 
we talked about his name, Apostle, who is, who is the one established by God. Let me go a little deeper. Can I go a little deeper? All right. When Jesus named them apostles, that word apostle was not a religious word. It was not a word in the temple. It was not used by the Pharisees or Sadducees, neither by the scribes. It was not a word from a religious community. Are you still here? By the way, you know apostolic meetings, they take long. Yeah. Hello? We preach long. I know I'm in America. And, but I've been given time, so I still have 30 minutes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then I'll get an offering from you. Jesus. May your offering begin to get on fire. Because you have to remove it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because we have come before the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, there, is no, there was no word like apostle in the temple or anywhere. Listen, this apostle is the word apostolos. In Greek, Apostolos was an officer in the Roman government. Listen to this. This guy called Apostolos, this is what it means. He was an emissary of the king. He's a guy who commandeered a group of ships taken, I mean, sent by the king to go to a new region and establish a new colony for the Romans. The guy who led that operation was an Apostolos. Now listen, Apostolos, he was a, a messenger, emissary, he was ambassador, sent. The word means sent. Somebody say sent. There's somewhere I'm going with this. Because if we don't establish doctrine, we'll get it wrong. But I'm glad you are getting it. May the spirit of understanding rest upon you. Your congosity. Your what? Congosity. Your spirit, your head, your mind. Glory to God. So this Roman guy, listen to this. The king, in sending an apostolos, there was something very special that helps us in the definition. Write these five things down. Write these things down. That word means sent. Somebody say sent. Ah, sent. That's why fathers send sons Accept the mandate of being sent. It means sent. Number two, that guy who was sent, oh my God, this is it. This one, you must get it or get it. Touch your neighbor, say this one, you have to get it. Tell your neighbor, don't become an intercessor now. Now, you must get this one. Listen to this. The king only sent his friends. There was no apostolos who was a stranger. The guy was a friend of the king. There is no way you can define apostolos and apostolic ministry without friendship. Friendship means relationship. Wow. That relationship requires fellowship. So when you talk of fathers and sons, this matter has to come in clearly of friendship. Write this down. I know some of you are not writing anything because uh, you are the genius we heard about in the book of records. You, anything you hear, do, 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 do. You assimilate it. But because you also are not prepared with the notes, we shall use your neighbor's notes. Listen to this. Friendship before function is a principle of ministry. Friendship before function. Don't work with strangers or enemies. Work with the friends. Did you hear what I just said? So fathers must take their position and begin to spend time with the core leaders in the church to do what? To build friendship and relationships before we can go anywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to, uh, you know, when we began teaching this, I, I got criticized so much by the church generally, so I developed uh, a defense mechanism that anything I say, I must prove it in scripture. That's my survival. So anything I say, 
even friendship before function. Go to Mark chapter 3, verse 13. Listen to this. The Bible says, again, he went up to a high mountain and called to himself those whom he wanted. Have you reached Mark 3, 13? Yeah, those whom he wanted. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I'm wanted. Shout, I'm wanted. But not by the police. Say, not by the police. Then they came to him. So he called to himself those whom he wanted. They came to him. Look at verse 14. Why they came to him. He appointed 12. Some versions say he ordained. Uh, that's another controversy. But he appointed. That they might be with him. Look at the reason for being called. Is that you might, we might be with him. And then number two. That he might send them out to preach. Look, I refer to Bishop's preaching. I like his English of being, what did you say? Job rubbed or rubbed job. Jesus. You say I'm funny? Baba yao wa hapa. Look, might, might be with him and that he might send them. That means you will be apostolod, sent on condition that you spend time with him to build relationship. If you did not build relationship with him, you will not be sent. There is no apostolic ministry without relationships, fellowship, being built, fathers and sons spending time together. And your stomach being a burial ground for chicken. You didn't get it. <laughs> we have to kill more chicken as we eat together. As we fellowship together. As, as we take time together. Take the teas uh, and, uh, and the concussions uh, and uh, fellowship together. Until we can know each other. And if we spend time together building relationship. Guess what? Then we shall be able to handle ministry. And we shall be sent. We shall be released. We shall be commissioned. We shall be sent to the whole world. Glory to God. So sent. Friends. Number three. If you're a friend. Then they carried the authority. Authority of the king. Somebody say authority. Authority is vested, manifested relationally. Jesus. Authority is expended relationally. You are given authority. Number four, an apostolos was submitted. So the whole aspect of submission was of necessity so important, you cannot avoid it. Because if you have been sent, you have to bring back feedback. You got to show that you are sent and you are submitted to the one who sent you. Hello? That submission must be of the heart. Must be of the heart. It is a heart submission. The apostolos who was sent, number what? Five, carried the language of the sender. Somebody say language. That means message, doctrine. What are you going to say, my Agazokata? This church, or you call leaders and pastors, you have call leaders. Those men and women that work with you must carry your language. Must have your language. And finally, number six, apostolos needed to be, to go and conquer. Uh, they went to conquer. So if the emissary went to a new area and found names of buildings, they changed the names of buildings. They found names of streets. They changed the names of those streets and ensured what they built looked like Rome. Yeah, we have been sent here in this nation and whatever we are building must look like King Jesus. We represent heaven. We have been sent from above. Whatever we are doing must represent the kingdom of God. Jesus is the one who has sent us. Oh my God, we represent him. Now, you understand now the great commission. As my father has sent me, so 
send I you in John chapter 20. Praise the Lord. We've been given that mandate, that responsibility. Wow. Now, if there are no relationships between leaders and those being led, the ministry, the church, the organization will go stand, grind to a halt. We need to bring back relationships. And it is incumbent of us who are leaders of ministries to create time to be available to spend time with those we are raising. Because if they don't see us, feel us, know us, hear from us, they cannot catch the spirit. Kayaza. They cannot catch the spirit. Hey. They cannot catch the spirit. Let me tell you, in that Acts chapter 1, there was a guy called Judas. Do you remember him? Jesus' ministry was so successful, he had 12 permanent members. One committed suicide. And Jesus did not sacrifice him. You try to have one of your leaders die. They will say you have sacrificed him for power. You don't know Africa. You, you are just thinking. People dying in your church, you have sacrificed them for power. So Judas died. Are we together? They are now in the upper room, 10 days, waiting for the Holy Ghost. Is it easy to pray for 10 days without the Holy Ghost? So Peter looks for work to do. He called for an uh, independent electoral commission to replace Judas. Hey. They appointed two men, Justus and Matthias. And they prayed the prayer in verse 24. Lord, you who know the heart of Azimio, Haro, and Uda, show us whom you have chosen. Zayaza. And we prayed. What did God do? We went and voted. And Justus lost the elections. Guess what? They were doing elections in the upper room. And justice did not defect. He still stayed in the upper room waiting for the Holy Ghost. Some of these Africans, they lose even a small seat. Even in the church. They go to another place. They were not ready for God. A little difference here and there, and then you move. That means your heart was not ready it was not a, a wineskin that could handle the new wine. I'm glad Justus never left the upper room and Matthias stayed there. But guess what? That was Peter's operations. And he quoted the Psalms. Let another take his bishopric. But later the Holy Ghost came and did his own elections and replaced Judas by bringing Saul of Tarsus. Kayazuga. And Saul became Paul became the real replacement of the apostles. Okay, that's another matter. Listen to me. Let me use an Old Testament example to show you this relational matter is so major so that fathers can take their place and position and sons can take their positions. Are we together? I know some people say, well, this is a new doctrine. You guys, you know, there are young people in the internet saying fathering and sonship is a new strange doctrine. Let me tell you, the examples, write this down. There are many. Oh my God, we have Moses and Joshua. We have Eli or Eli and Samuel. These are patterns. We have Naomi and Ruth. These are Father, son, patterns. We have a major one. Elijah and Elisha. Do you know those guys? Oh my God. Anywhere there are two or three examples, a matter is established. Glory to God. And we can give you many. When you come to the New Testament, we have Paul and the famous Timothy. Look at the Timothy next to you. And I'm serious. Look at the Timothy next to you. If that is Timothy, there must be a Paul. There must be somebody God used to bring that neighbor of yours to where they are. Hey, how about Paul and Titus and many others? Those are already over three examples. So it is a biblical doctrine that we see men and women who have gone ahead and there are others that are coming in. It is established in the word of God. And so it's biblical. Fathers and sons is biblical. But let me take you to Exodus 18. And let's find a man called Moses. And in this chapter, 
all of you doctors and PhD students, God bless you, and all of you academic gurus, we salute you. Because we learned in all the universities the greatest leadership model by Jethro, the delegation model. Today, I want to debunk that in seven minutes of a preacher. Oh my God. To show you that model needs revision. And for it to become an apostolic prophetic model that can model Christ. Because Jethro was a priest in Midian. We cannot use Midian technology in the New Testament church. Oh, you didn't get it. It's like Goliath saying as a champion, give me a champion. Now, I know we like champion, but it's a Philistine technology. We can't use that in the church. We don't have champions in the church. Where did you learn that from? From Goliath. Is Goliath, Reverend Goliath. No. Okay. You catch these things tomorrow. Lord Jesus. Exodus 18 is where we have Jethro, right? Jethro's advice. But before you receive that advice, I want you to look at chapter 16, verse. One. Chapter 16, verse 1. They journeyed from Elim, blah, 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 on the second part. On the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. This is very early, just two months. They left when? Two months ago. When did they leave Egypt? Two months ago. In chapter 18, Moses is very tired. Jethro has come to see his father in, son in law, and he has arrived with the camels and whatever. You know what how it happens in Africa. The father in law has come in. Oh my god, the guy cannot see his son Moses. Reverend Moses, hey, is so busy. The line outside the Reverend Moses' office, the line is so long. Moses is just saying, Next. Next. One man came to me one day and he told me, man of God, pray for me. When I sleep, somebody touches my toe. I feel somebody has touched my toe. And he touches the toe going up to the knee. He touches the knee, touches the thigh, touches the waist, touches my stomach. By the time he's touching my head, I scream. He, he said, I've been touched for nine years. So he said, I don't visit people lest I'm touched in their houses and I scream in the middle of the night and they run away. So I stay alone in Nairobi. I'm stuck. I've never gone back home for five years. This suit, I put it on for five years. I'm always touched. Then he made a mistake. He said, and you are the 11th preacher. I'm coming for prayer. So the last preacher said, next. <laughs> next. I almost said, Next. <laughs> Because now, this is too much. So I, I listened to him. Then I said, Lord, I cannot be next. We have to solve this problem now. And find out who is touching him. So I began to do spiritual googling. In the spirit, scanning in the Holy Ghost, using the gifts of the spirit. To know who is who, where, who did what, where, sent the hand, where, from where. And within a short time, how many of you know if you Google something, eight, 0 0.18 seconds, you have the answer. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, this man was dedicated to death when he was a child. I asked him, has your mother ever told you a story about this matter? He said, oh, come to think of it. We were born as twins. My brother died. On the funeral day, they picked me who was alive, put me in the grave. And they said, oh, you have taken his brother. We also give you this one, but return him to us. Then they removed me out and then they buried my brother. I said, good, you are dedicated to death. You are a dead walking man. And the guy was jobless with three diplomas, no work, no nothing. He couldn't go home to see his children for five years. He was stuck in Nairobi. And he's in my office. I said, now, whatever God reveals, he heals. So this is the day the Lord has made. I almost said, you will never, 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 never be the same again. 
Then we began to pray. The man manifested. He caused ruffles and problems in my office. He pushed everything on site. Noise was being heard five offices away. They were saying, yeah, in that pastor's office, there are some strange noises. Yeah. Deliverance was taking place. <laughs> After that prayer, the hand stopped touching him. He was not touched again. Then now he was jobless. I told him he was going to another church I will not mention because it was in our neighborhood. And the pastor had said, next. So uh, I told him, come with all your certificates Sunday morning. We pray for your job issue. Because I discovered his father was a witch. So he could get witchcraft money, pay his school fees. So when he get a little job, the demons come for the money. Because he was educated in witchcraft. And there was payback time. So he was a slave. So I, you should have seen me Sunday morning praying for certificates. As if I'm the employer. Those brown envelopes. We prayed. In the name of Jesus. Declared, do, 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 do. you now are okay. You have work. Go by faith. On Monday, he got three jobs. Wow. And he was not a member of our church. He got how many jobs? Two of the jobs, he was paid in advance. Then he brought me the tithe because I'm the one who prayed. Did he? And then I ate it in the presence of the Lord. And smoke was going up to God. And God saying, that's my son. I'm so happy with my son. Did I mess up to eat somebody's tithe? Huh? Tell your neighbor next. So, I know you like stories more than the scripture because, but I'm not Apostle Patrick Moredi. He's the one who gives stories and he is watching me. God bless you wherever you are, sir. Live forever. So, listen. Second month, Jethro is so amazed. His son has no time for him. Do you know what Jethro said? Because you are leaders and you know scripture. In the evening, he told his son in Law Moses, this work of God you are doing is not good. <laughs> a priest from Midian is declaring the work of God for, of the deliverer from Egypt of Israel is not good. What did Jethro say in chapter 18? He said, uh, you, you're going to weary yourself. This is only the second third month. Look at the next verse. Choose ye men. Uh, go where they choose men, where they're choosing men uh, to, to replace, I mean, to help Moses in this assignment. Verse, do you get it? Verse, uh, hmm. <laughs> listen to my counsel. Verse 19, oh my God. Select verse 21. Look at the men. Able men. Verse 21. Such as fear God. Glory to God. Men of truth. Wow. Hating covetousness. What a qualification. And you shall place them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, and so forth. Listen. Every church has core leaders. These core leaders should be able men. Such as fear God. Men of truth. Are we together? Such as hate covetousness. They can't steal the offering. In Africa, churches lose offering from thieves. In America, yeah. you haven't lost nothing, but it's on the way. Yeah. Unless you shift the system and hear what I'm saying to you. Okay. Surely, I mean, where did you see such a bright, I mean, somebody who is able, fear God, man of truth, hating covetousness. I mean, these are the kind of people you need. <laughs> Hello? Let's go to Numbers 11. Let me show you something. Numbers 11, following the same story. But before 11, let's read Numbers 10, verse 11. In 10, 11 of Numbers, it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle of testimony and so forth. Now, somebody says, second year. When Jethro was sorting Moses, it was the second of that month. Now, two years later, Moses has already wonderful core team members who are able men and women 
who fear God. They are from the Dallas University. Amazing men who love truth. They are core leaders in the ministry. But now, two years later, somebody shout, two years later. <laughs> Chapter 11. Look at verse 11, how Moses is speaking. You tell me a pastor like this one. If you find a pastor talking like this, Chapter 11, verse 11. You tell me whether everything is okay. Mr. Reverend, uh, pastor, where, where, Mutoto pastor. Why have you afflicted your servant? Why have I not favor, found favor in your sight? You have laid the burden of these people on me. Surely. I thought Jethro told you to get men who can carry the burden. Now, Moses, you are complaining that the whole burden is on you. What happened to the able men? What happened to your staff? Look at the next verse. If you find a man of God speaking like this, in Matusi, did I conceive these people? Now, who is he telling? Who is he telling? Did I conceive these people? Did I beget them? And you should say, you know, with an attitude. Uh, carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which you swore to their fathers. You, you told them you take them to the land of their fathers. Did I give? Look at the next verse. There is trouble. Where am I to get me to all these people? For they weep all over me saying, Give me me, give me me. To you. <laughs> Look at the next verse. The man of God is in trouble. I'm not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. What happened, Mr. Moses? How can you say it's too heavy? You are now talking, abusing God, bringing conception, bedroom matters before God. Seriously, what is wrong with this ministry? Look at the next verse. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. Now, this man is committing suicide. Mr. Reverend is doing what? What is the problem? Burden. Are we together? The work is too much. Two years, eh? Remember, they are going to stay 40 years. This is only the second. <laughs> and the man is going to die. Do not let me see my wretchedness. Look at the next verse. So the Lord said to Moses, Now, I like God. God does not get involved with your little battles. To answer you, yeah, I did not conceive them. Yeah, I'm the one who conceived them. Don't worry, I have meat. No, no, no. This is what Moses did. This is what God told Moses. Gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle meeting that may stand there before me. God did not respond to the trouble. He brought a solution. He called for a meeting. Let's see the meeting. Let's go to the meeting. Tell your neighbor, let's go to the meeting. You know why you need to tell your neighbor to go to the meeting? Because there are two men who never came. There are two men who never finally came. You know, in every meeting, there are some two Nemakohias. I mean, there are some two, two type of people who never come to the meeting. Even if you advertise it on CNN, they will still not come. Okay, you didn't get it. Look at the next verse. Go to the next verse quickly. And then I'll come down and talk with you there. Oh, I thought he would talk to the 24. No, he will talk to Moses. He will not talk to the 20, to the, he will not talk to the 70. How can you be called to a meeting by God and he ignores you? He's talking to Moses. Because you need to talk to the leader, he will sort the sons, the elders. God comes and speaks to the set man. Oh, in the book of Revelation, the seven message, messages to the seven churches. I read a book called Seven Churches, not in the book of Revelation. Seller. And I can name them. And some of them are here in America, but that's another message for next year. So, the message to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? Angel is angelos in Greek, meaning pastor messenger. So, instead of talking to the whole church, he just talks to the set man, the leader, the father, the head of that house. When he gets the message, the rest of the congregation will get it. If you're part of that congregation, you better keep your eye on the angelos, the angel of the house. Because when God comes to the meeting of 70 men, he will not talk to all of you. He will talk to Moses. All right. 
and you know the rest of the story. I will take off the spirit in you and I will pass it on to the 70 elders. Then they will help you. I'll put the same. They, will, they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Okay, there was father-in-law's advice and this is Father God advice. So tell me how you want to run your ministry with the father-in-law advice or Father God. What's the difference between Jethro's advice and Father God advice? I will take of the spirit that is upon you, Moses, and I will put the same. Listen, is a spirit transfer matter. You can be together in ministry, but you are not of the same spirit. And that's where the problem is. There must be a father in the house, and then the sons and the leaders, and whatever you are called, deputy assistant to the junior pastor who assists the associate pastor. You know, they are titles, my friend. Don't joke around with Africa. They are what? Titles. Whatever is your title, please, ladies and gentlemen, you must carry the same spirit that is on the leader of that house. That's where fathers and sons comes in. This is a pattern. You are not a Member number 17. <laughs> Thank God you moved from members to sons. Now let me tell you something as I close because time is over. Wow. I have just labored in doctrine, biblically, to lay and show you this is the only thing that is going to work for ministry. You better open up your heart to somebody. Take a position. If you're in a congregation like this one, you don't take a position like this. Look at my hand. You're standing there as a colleague. No. Take a lower position. <laughs> so that our oil can flow. Amen. Ay, 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 ay. Oil can do what? I know some of you don't listen to men. You listen to God. You get your revelations direct. Stand up, young man. God bless you. Come here. Stand up. Come, 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 son. Yeah. So, this is Mr. Somebody. Do this, sir. You go, follow this man, follow this man. Take corners, run, jump, do whatever. No, no, no. Where do you want to follow you? Follow you. Follow this one, follow this one. Take, follow. It's easy. Follow. Quickly, quickly, follow. Good. Sorry to disturb you. You are seated on the big chair. God bless you. Can you see? It's very easy to follow. Okay, you, sir. You, oh, yeah, stand up. You follow God. Follow God now. <laughs> huh? This man cannot follow God. Why? You follow God by following somebody. Amen. Uh, that's a good place for you to clap hands. <laughs> Sit down. You must identify somebody you can follow. Don't tell me, me, I talked with Angel Michael direct. I get my messages from heaven direct. No, 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 no. Those messages have been preached before by Bishop Mark. That's right. <laughs> you can Google. Even if you receive a message from Angel Gabriel, assisted by Michael, you will discover it was preached before in the last hundred years. So come slowly. <laughs> Come what? I hear you're being ordained tomorrow. You better catch the spirit so that it's not a religious event. It's a son running after the father. And it's relational. We are not here as long as there is convenience. We are yours forever. Listen to this. When people got saved, we told them, give your heart to Jesus. Great. You gave your heart to Jesus. There's something we forgot to tell you. Give your heart also to your pastor and to your spiritual leader. Yeah, tell your neighbor, give your heart to somebody. I know your heart is very precious, but you have to give it to somebody. In other words, you are ready to follow, to pursue, and to go after. Are we together? Now, when you see somebody has walked out, it means the time is all. If I continue here, I'll be left alone. (laughs) 
Yeah, he is clapping hands because I'll be left where? <laughs> God bless you, sir. Let's clap our hands because, because he has finished the service. <clears throat> Glory to God. I don't have time to tell you like the Hebrew says. Of the 20 things fathers do. And what sons must do. But I've just laid a foundation in your spirit. Christianity must be relational. It is fathers and sons. Let me make the last statement. The new wine skin for the church is father-son relationship. Wine skin is container that is going to carry the new move of God. It's our relationships that are going to carry that thing. If you are wounded, hurt, you have an orphan spirit, you don't maintain relationships because you are high-profile wounded person. A little thing, you call the police. Even for the pastor. You tell the pastor, I will sue you. I will show you dust. And you, it's just church. We just differed about the color of the envelope. And you want to sue the man of God. You are so wounded. You are a high-profile wounded person. You, are, you should actually be taken to ICU before you can enter the choir. Spiritual ICU. Attend all Bible studies, all prayer meetings, all services before we can move you to HDU. As we observe how your heart is being healed, the Lord told me, spiritual, historic injustices have made many people's ministries never go anywhere. Because they were historically wounded, they wounded others, they threw hand there, they threw towel there, they disobeyed that, they rebelled against that. All these are historic injustices that exist in their journey of ministry. Right now, they are held up. They cannot break camp and move forward. May healing occur in somebody's heart. Learn to forgive, learn to honor. If you threw your hand against a reverend, a man of God, a church, and a pastor, come slowly, go back, humble yourself, repent, tell God, heal me, touch me, collect a good offering. Look for the man of God. If he doesn't want to meet you because you are wounding, the way you hurt him was so deep, give him more time. Keep your offering in the house and give him another two weeks for him also to handle the pressure because you are on the way coming. And we don't know whether you are coming in peace. Even Jacob had to send four levels of offerings ahead before he met his brother Esau. Don't think it's as easy also for me to let you go the way you slammed the door and you cut the church into pieces and went away. Anyway, we have heard in this break camp conference, we need to forgive you, love you, and uh, do the best we can. And we are ready by the grace of God. But listen, please, honor. And God will give you a great opportunity in your ministry. Did you hear what I say? May the grace of God come. Brother, uh, come back to that Pro Box. Uh, th that thing is more expensive than Pro Box. Come, come and touch it. Okay, somebody just lift your hand and just tell Jesus, I love you. And I want you. I need you. Tell the Lord, I need you. I love you. I want you. You are my everything. Glory to God. Zele Waimbaji mkiona nimeitisha i prom box. Mnafanya nini? Mnakimbia. Everybody stand up on your feet. I will come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus. In your presence is fullness of joy. For there is nothing, there is no one who compares to you. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. Lift your hand.
and somebody say, I take pleasure. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. One more time, I take pleasure. I take pleasure in worship, worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. One more time, lift your hands. Say.